Now coming to the root of placement through which the stents go in. The most common site is the femoral artery. It passes through the iliac artery into the iota. That is the most commonest route of endovascular placement. Other routes include your radial artery, ulnar artery. Apart from that, in some complex procedure, you use brachial or axillary and subclavian artery too. Now coming to the procedural placement, the first the guide wire is placed into the vascular lumen. Then you put a sheath. Through this sheath, you place the stent. That is how you do. Okay, the sense graft is compressed in the outer sheath and with the pusher rod at the distal end. First the guide wire goes in, next the sheath goes in and then the stent is placed via the guide wire inside the sheath and then the sheath is removed. Now coming to action potential. It has five phases. Phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4. What is this phase 0? Phase 0 is depolarization. Phase 1 is rapid repolarization. And phase 2 is the plateau phase. Phase 3 is the final repolarization. And resting membrane potential is the phase 4. What are the various changes which happens in each phases? Let us look at phase 0. Here there is sodium influx due to opening of voltage gated sodium channel. That is phase 0. This is the T tubule diiridopyridine receptor. This is the rhinodin receptor. Now a current comes, action potential comes, it activates the diiridopyridine receptor which in turn activates the rhinodin receptor channel and this green one are the calcium which comes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and goes into the cytoplasm and acts on actin and myosin to initiate the contraction. This is the normal contraction. Now what happens in malignant hyperthermia. The calcium remains inside the cytoplasm and it does not go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and you can see the sustained contraction of the skeletal muscle thereby generating more heat, more ATP and more carbon dioxide. Here you can see the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum has moved into the cytoplasm. Why this arrhythmia is very, very important? Apart from acute coronary syndrome, decompensated heart failure and severe valvular heart disease, significant arrhythmia is one major clinical predictor which needs delay and evaluation before proceeding to elective surgery. What do you mean by significant arrhythmias? These are the various significant arrhythmia. High grade AV block, symptomatic ventricular arrhythmias, Supraventricular arrhythmia when your ventricular rate is greater than 100 at rest, symptomatic bradycardia, newly recognized ventricular tachycardia. These are all significant arrhythmias which needs evaluation before going for surgery. Perioperative arrhythmia has a quite interesting history. It was way back in 1882 in a remote village of Prussia where the surgeon name was von Zeman and the patient name was Katrina Serafin. Of course, the anesthetist name is not there. And the surgery was a chest wall tumor removal. Why you are worried about carboxy hemoglobin? The normal sigmoid shape curve of oxy hemoglobin dissociation curve will be shifted to the left side. Here you can see the carboxy hemoglobin which is shifted to the left. By doing that, the oxygen delivery to the tissue is affected. Now coming to nicotine, a typical cigarette almost contains about 2 milligram of nicotine. The half-life of nicotine is about 30 minutes 
and it is metabolized by cytochrome P452 various constant the most important thing is going to be the cortenin which remains in the bloodstream for about 